Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is my boy honey. Well, I got another great bottle to share with you today. This time from Heaven Hill Distillery. We got the old Fitzgerald bottled and bun 10 year Kentucky straight a bourbon whiskey. Heaven Hill comes out with two renditions of this decanter series every year and this is the spring 2023 version of it. I know they recently they came out with the eight year bottle and bond for 2023. I haven't seen that yet so if I do I'll make sure to share it with you but for now we have the the first rendition of 2023 decanter series from Heaven Hill so we'll try this bad boy out and then I'll share with you my thoughts on it. Very excited. So. But before we get into it Quick history on Old Fitzgerald. It's one of the handful of, of brands, bourbon brands, that have a very storied history. So back in the 1870s, a guy named John E. Fitzgerald, he started selling whiskey primarily to steamship workers and railway workers. So late 1800s, it was sort of selling to those two groups of people. In 1900, it started selling it to the general public. In the 1920s and 1930s, when the prohibition hit, I think it was one of the few distilleries or few brands that sort of survived prohibition under the understanding that the whiskey was being sold as medicinal purposes, which is hilarious. Shortly after the 1920s and 30s, after it survived the prohibition era, it was sold to another distillery called Stitzel Distillery. It was owned by a guy named Julian Pappy Van Winkle, the guy who started the whole Pappy Van Winkle line. So it was sold to that distillery owned by Pappy Van Winkle. And shortly after selling, they changed the recipe. They started using wheat as one of the ingredients in the whiskey. So instead of rye, they started using wheat, which makes the, the whiskey a lot more softer, uh, more rounded. It sort of rounds out the edges, more enjoyable, more smoother to drink. Very similar to the Pappy Van Winkle line, which is also a weeded, weeded whiskey. So it was sold as a weeded whiskey since then. So fast forward to sort of present day now, the brand was sold to Heaven Hill Distillery in 1999 and starting in 2018 they started coming out with two a year batch of this decanter series of Old Fitzgerald and since then it's been a mega hit for for the bourbon lovers. So every year it comes out with two renditions of it one sometime during the spring it depends um, sometimes in the spring and sometimes in the fall it's still bottled and bond at 50 percent alcohol but the uh, age statement varies. So this one has a 10 year age statement, but it could vary from eight as, as low as eight to all the way to 19. I think 19 is the highest I've seen. So that's a little bit of a background on the old Fitzgerald. It's, uh, some people see it as the Pappy line of the Heaven Hill distillery. And it's very, and it's true, and it holds true. It has a very intertwined history with Pappy Van Winkle bourbons. And it also has a similar recipe. That's a very reasonable parallel to make. So without further ado, let's get to the whiskey and uh, let's get right to it. Okay. All right. Pour a little bit. Let's go for the nose. Right off the bat, very fruity. Uh, the, the scent on this is very fruit forward, very fresh, refreshing. Smell like lemons, pineapples, maybe like red fruits, vanilla. Very pleasant smelling. Very pleasant. Very pleasant. All right, here we go. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. Delicious. Delicious. Similar to the nose, right off the bat, you taste the fruit. It's very fruit forward, uh, very sweet. It's one of the sweeter bourbons that I've tasted this year. The red fruits are coming through, very, like white sugar, very, very sugar, like light caramel. Nothing dark here, nothing too dark here. Roast the peanuts a little bit, slight pepperiness, but fruits, a lot of fruits, berries, um, lemon. Yeah, a little pineapple, like a canned pineapple, those sweet canned pineapples you get at the supermarkets. Mouthfeel is pretty medium, uh, you know, it stays with you for a little bit, but it's gone. Um, there's no burn, obviously, it's only 50% alcohol, so it's not that harsh on your mouth. Finish isn't too long, but it's, you know, it, I'm content with it, it's satisfactory, so no complaints there. Again, you have to go into this whiskey 
knowing that it's 50%. I, I, you know, I notice a lot of the people, they gravitate towards higher proof whiskey and they expect that from something like this, from bottled and bought, right? From 50% alcohol. And you know, when you go into that with that mentality, a lot of the times you're gonna be disappointed because you're expecting one thing and you're not gonna get that. You have to come in with the, with, with the mindset that, hey, this is a 50% alcohol bottled and bond. Um, you know, it's not gonna hit you like a truck, like a 30, 130, 140 proof. But at the same time, it's gonna give you that, the balance of flavors, like the fruitiness, the sweetness, lemon fresh, uh, refreshing taste. Um, something like apple, I taste some of the apples now. Those kind of flavors are, are more front and center than like the bold, you know, punch in the face kind of, uh, kind of the flavors that a lot of the 130 and the 140 proof bring to the table. It's very easy drinking, very enjoyable, and very balanced. The story is I got this bottle from Bevmo. We got it for $136. It was totally unexpected, I didn't know. So there's a lot of Bevmo. Yeah, I don't know if you know. Bevmo is a large, like a, you know, alcohol and spirits chain around here. There's a lot of Bevmo's and total wines around here. And there's one that I frequent um, a lot of times and they bring in a lot of the good stuff, good allocated stuff. One morning I went in, I asked the employee that morning, how's it going, you know, anything good today? And the employee just said, no, I don't think so, we just got the shipment. I didn't have a time to unpack and, you know, put on the shelves, but you're happy to take a look if you want. And he sort of brought out the whole cart that had the shipments for that, for that morning. So I thought, okay, sounds good, thank you. And, you know, I was looking through and for the most part, I didn't see anything, um, you know, the regular stuff. So I was just taking a look and you know, in the corner of my eye, I saw the top of this bottle inside of a plastic wrap. So I sort of lifted the boxes around it on top of it to sort of see what was inside. And lo and behold, it was this, it was two actually, two of this bottle in a plastic bag. So I grabbed it and took it to the front. So it was a very lucky find for me. Totally wasn't expecting it. The employee didn't know anything about it. When the person rang it up, the person had no idea that it was one of the very highly allocated bottles. I got very lucky at Bethmo. So that's how I got a hold of this bottle. Now, on the secondary, or if you really want to find it now, it's very hard. You're gonna to have to, you know, search liquor stores, right? You're gonna to have to search secondary markets for this. And from what I've seen, it's going, you know, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, or whatnot. And it's so it's gonna to be tough. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, do I recommend this bottle? Absolutely. This is one of the one of the bottles that I absolutely enjoy drinking. You know, it's not a pappy. It's not, you know, beat tag but it's still very highly allocated and very sought after and I can see why. It's very balanced. It's not 130, 140 proof again, but it's 100 proof that gives you a lot of the fruit flavors, a lot of the sweet flavors, and it's very easy to drink, very approachable for somebody who's not, you know, akin to too high ABV or likes fruity and, you know, sweet flavors. So I highly recommend it if you are able to get a, uh, get a taste of it from somebody who has it already or a bar. It's too bad it's going for you know, four or five, six hundred dollars. I wish it was not like that, but um, it is what it is. So. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for joining again. Um, I enjoyed this this whiskey. Let me know if you had a taste of this and what your thoughts are. Did you enjoy this old Fitzgerald? Uh, were you able to see it? Well, how much did you see it when you were, when you came across it? Or would you get one for two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars? Is that worth that much to you? Let me know in the comment section. But otherwise, thanks so much again. Have a good one, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.